shows that have the cube coverage. It makes the show buzz. It creates excitement. More importantly, it creates great content, great digital assets that can be shared instantaneously to the world. Live from Midtown Manhattan, it's theCUBE. Covering Big Data New York City 2017. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media and its ecosystem sponsors. Okay, welcome back everyone. Live in New York, it's theCUBE coverage day three of three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage of Big Data NYC in conjunction with Strata Data right around the corner, separate event than ours we've been covering. This is our eighth year. We're here expanding on our statement we just had with Matt from Dell EMC on, you know, really on the front lines consultant. We got Jason from Blue uh, Data and Casey from Blue Talon, two separate companies, but the blue in Team the name, blue. Team Blue, and of course, uh, Matt from Dell EMC. Guys, welcome uh, back uh, to the Cube. And let's talk about partnerships. I know you guys have a partnership. Uh, Dell EMC leads, leads the front lines, obviously, with the, with the customer base. You guys come in with the, with the secret sauce to help that solution, which I want to get to in a minute. But the big theme here this week is partnerships. Um, and before we get into the relationship that you guys have, I want you to talk about the changes in the ecosystem, because we're seeing Couple key things, open source won and is winning, continues to grow. But the Linux Foundation pointed out, uh, open source summit we covered, that exponential growth is going to be in open source software. We're going to see from 64 you know, lines of code to billions in the next 10 years. So more onboarding. So clear development path. The ecosystems have worked. Right. Now they're coming into the enterprise with suppliers, whether it's consultings, front end, or full stack developers coming together. How do you see ecosystems playing in both the supplier side and also the customer side? So uh, we see from the supplier side, right, and, and from the customer side as well, and it kind of drives both of those conversations together, is that you had the early days of, I don't want vendor lock-in, right? I want to have a disparate um, virtual cornucopia of tools in the marketplace. And then they were, each individual shop was trying to develop those and implement those on their own. And what you're now seeing is that companies still want that diversity in the tools that they utilize and that they work with, but they don't want that, the complication of having to deliver all those tools themselves. So they're looking um, more for partners that can actually bring an ecosystem to the table where it's a loose coupling of events, but that one person actually has the forefront and has the customer's best interest in mind and actually be able to drive through those pieces. And that's what we see from a partnership why we are really driving towards partnerships because we can be a point solution and we can solve a lot of pieces, but by bringing us, us, us as a part of an ecosystem and with a partner that can actually help deliver the customer and business value to the customer, that's where we're starting to see the traction and the movement and the wins for us as an organization. Blue Data, you guys have had very big success as big data as a service, Docker containers. Yep. This is the program, programmer's nirvana. Mm -hmm. Infrastructure as code, that's the DevOps ethos that's going mainstream. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on partnering, because you can't do it alone. Yeah, I mean, for us, speaking of DevOps, I mean, we, we see you know, our software platform provides a, a solution for you know, bringing a, a DevOps approach to data science and big data analytics. You know, it's a much more streamlined approach, um, you know, elastic and agile approach to big data analytics and data science. Um, but to your point, you know, we're, we're you know, partnered with Dell EMC because they bring together an entire solution. Uh, that you know, delivers an, you know, an elastic platform for secure multi-tenant environments for data science teams and analyst teams um, for a variety of different open source tool, tool sets. So there is a, a large ecosystem of open source tools out there, you know, from Hadoop to Spark to Kafka to a variety of different data science and machine learning and deep learning tool sets out there. We provide through our platform the ability to dockerize all of those environments, uh, make them available through self-service um, to the data science community so they can get up and running quickly and start building their models and, and running their algorithms. Um, and for us, it's on any infrastructure. So we, we work closely with Dell EMC to run it on, on Isilon and their infrastructure, um, Dell powered servers, but, but also you, know, you can run it in a hybrid cloud architecture. So you can run it on mm -hmm. you know, Azure and, and now GCP and, uh, and um, AWS. So the, this is the agility piece for the developer. They get all that agility, That's get right. some security. Mm -hmm. yep. Dell EMC has all the infrastructure side. So you got to partner together. Matt, pull this together. The customer doesn't want, they, they want a, the single pane of glass or however you want to look at it. They don't want to deal with the nuances. You guys got to bring it all together, but they want it to work. Yep. 
now the theme here at the big data in New York is integration is right. everything. Yep. Right? So if it doesn't integrate, the plumbing's not working. How important is it for the customer to have this smooth, seamless experience? It, it's, it's critical for them to, they have to be able to believe that it's going to be a seamless experience. And these are just two partners in the ecosystem. When we, when we talk to enterprise customers, they have other vendors. They mm -hmm. have half a dozen or a dozen other vendors solving big data problems, right? The Hadoop vendors, the analytic tools, on and on and on. And what, when they choose a partner like us, they want to see that we are bringing other partners to the table that are going to complement or enhance capabilities that they have. But they want to see two key things, and, and we need to see the same things as well when we look at partnerships. We want to see APIs. We want to see open APIs that are well documented mm -hmm. so that we know these tools can play with each other. And two, these have to be organizations we can work with. A at the end of the day, a customer does business with Dell EMC because they know we're going to stand behind whatever we put in front of them. They get a track record too, you're pretty solid. It, it, but I want to get you, I want to push on the ecosystem, not you guys, yeah. critical, but I mean, I, one thing I've seen over my 30 years in the enterprise is ecosystems are, uh, you see bullshit and you see real deal, right? So yeah, a lot of customers are scared. Now it's all this FUD and new technology, mm -hmm. it's hard to squint through what the BS is. Yep in an ecosystem, so how do you do ecosystems right in this new market? Because, like you said, it's not in APIs, that's kind of technical, but like philosophy-wise, you can't do the Barney deals. We had Pat Gelsinger standing up on stage at VMworld, basically flew down and stared in front of all the customers of, of VMworld's customers and said, we're not doing a Barney deal now. He didn't say Barney deals, that's our old term, but he said, it's not an optical deal we're doing with VMware. We got your back. He didn't say that, but that's my interpretation. That's what he basically said. The CEO of AWS said that. That's a partner, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So yep. some deals are, yay, we got a deal on paper. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? How do you run an ecosystem, in your opinion? Yeah, it's, it's not trivial. It's not an easy thing. It takes an executive, at that level, it takes a couple yeah. of executives coming I mean, together. From the top, obviously. Yeah, yeah, committing, it's not just money, it's reputation, right? If, if you're at that level, it's about reputation, which then trickles down to the company's reputation. And so within the ecosystem, we, we want to sort of crawl, walk, run. Let's do some projects So you're together. saying reputation in communities is number one thing? I think so, yeah. People are not going to go, I mean, so there, you always have the bleeding edge. Yeah, Someone's yeah. going to go play with a tool, they're well, going to see if it works. Reputation is everything. Yeah, if it fails, they're going to tell, what, what, is it, what is it saying? If something fails, you t if something bad happens, you tell 12 people. All right, so give them a compliment. What, what's, what's Blue Talon do great for you guys? Explain their talent in the ecosystem. So Blue Talon's uh, talent in the ecosystem, other than being just great people, right? we, we love <laughs> Uh, is that they I'll get you to say something bad about them soon, but now give them the compliment first. They have simplified the complexity of doing security, policy and role-based security for big data. So mm -hmm. regardless of where your data lives, regardless if it's Hadoop, Spark, Flink, Mongo, AWS, you define a policy once. And, and so if I'm in front of the chief governance officer, my infrastructure doesn't have a value prop to them, but, but theirs does, right? The legal team, when we have to do proposals, this is what gets us through the legal and compliance for GDPR and this, it's that centralized control that is so critical to the capabilities that we provide from big data. It, it, if you sprawl your data everywhere, and we know data sprawls everywhere. So you can rely on them, these guys. A absolutely. All right, Blue Data, give them a compliment. What do they fit? So they have solved the problem of deploying containers, big data environments in any cloud and the notion of ephemeral clusters for big data workloads is actually really, really hard to solve. We've seen a lot of organizations attempt to do this. We see frameworks out there like Kubernetes yeah. that mm -hmm. people are trying to build on. These guys have fixed it. We have gone through the most rigorous security audits at the biggest banks in the world and they have signed off because of the network segmentation yeah. and the data segmentation. It just works. I feel like I'm running a presidential debate. Now you got to say something <laughs> nice about him. <laughs> no, I mean, Dell EMC, we know what these guys do, but right. for you guys, I mean, how big is Blue Talon company-wise? I mean, you guys are not small, but you're not massive either. We're not, right? we're not small, but we're not massive, mm -hmm. right? So we're um, probably around 40 mm -hmm. um, resources global. And so from our perspective, we It's a great deal working with a big mm -hmm. gorilla in EM, Dell EMC. They got a lot of market share, big muscle. Exactly, and so for us, what we talked about earlier, right? The big thing for us is ecosystem functions. We do what we do really well, right? We build software that does control unified data access across multiple platforms as well as multiple distributions, whether it be private cloud, on-prem, or public cloud. And for us, the, again, the, it's great that we have the software. It's great that we can do those things. But if we can't actually help customers use that software to deliver value, 
it's useless. Do you guys go to market together? You just hold hands in front of the customer. You no, we, we go products. To, we go to market together. Okay. So we actually we work. For, um, a lot of our team and enablement is not enabling our customers. It is enabling Dell EMC on the use of our software and how to do that. So we actually work with Dell EMC to train and, and work and. To so you're a tight partner. Certification involved. Certification involved. Close relationship. Involved. You're not mailing. And then it we're in. also involved at the customer side as well. So it's not like we go, okay, great, now it's sold, and we throw up our hands and walk away. Well, they're counting on you for that. They're specific counting on us piece. for those specific pieces. But we're also working with Dell EMC so that we can get that that yeah. breadth, right, and that reach, so that they can actually go confident to their customers and understand where we fit and when we don't fit because we we don't we're not everything to everybody, right? And so we have to they have to understand those pieces to be able to know when that works right and how the best practices are. And so, again, we're 40 people. There, I forget, there were 80,000 at one point, maybe even more than that. But even in the services arm, you know, there's several thousands of people in the this services. This is the whole point about ecosystems you're getting at. You point at the critical, critical thing. You got a big piece of the puzzle. It's not just they're bundling you in. Right. You're an active part of that and it's an integration world, right? Correct. So he needs to rely on you exactly. to integrate with his systems yeah, and we have to integrate with the other parts of the ecosystem too, so, right? So it really is yeah. a three-way three integration on this perspective where they do what they do really well, we do what we do, and they're complementary to each other, but without the services and the, the glue from Dell EMC. So do EMC. you bring Dell EMC into deals too? We do, so we bring Dell EMC into deals, and Dell EMC sells us as a, through a reseller agreement with them, so we actually help jointly um, either bring them to a deal that we've already found, mm -hmm. we'll bring services to them, or we actually go out and do joint development of customers, right? So we actually yeah. come out and help with the sales process and the cycles to actually understand, is there a fit, is there not a fit? So it's not a, it's not a one size fit all, and it's not a just a, yes, we've got something on paper that we can sell you mm -hmm. and we'll sell you every once in a while. It really is a way to develop an ecosystem to deliver value to the customer. All right, guys, talk about the customer mindset real quick. When you, the, the, are they, how far along are they? I'm just, I don't really don't know much because I really are starting yep. to probe in this area. How savvy are they to the partnership levels? I mean, obviously I know you disclose it, you're transparent about it, but I mean, are customers getting that the partnering is very key? I mean, are they drilling, asking tough questions? Are you kind of, kind of, you know, getting them educated along the way? Are they savvy about it? I mean, they've been doing partners, doing outsourcing. But remember, the enterprise had a generation of, down to the bone, cutting, outsource everything, consolidation, and then you know go back around 2010, the uplift on reinvestment hit. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of in this renaissance right now. So, thoughts? It, it, the partnership is actually the secret sauce as part of our sales cycle. When we talk about big data outcomes and enabling self-service, customers assume, oh, okay, you guys built some software, you've got some hardware, and then when we double click into how we make this capable, we say, oh, well we partner with mm -hmm. a Blue Talon and a Blue Data, and there's other, and they go, wait a minute, that's not your software? No, no, that, that we didn't build that. We have, got, we have scoured the market and we found partners that we work with and we trust, and all of a sudden, you can see their sort of shoulders relax and they realize that we're not just there to sell them more kit, we're there to actually help them solve their problems. And it is a game changer, because they, they deal with vendors every day. Software vendor X, software vendor Y, hardware vendor Z, and so to have a, a company that they have good relationships with already bring more capabilities to them, it, it, the, the guard comes down and they say, okay, let's talk about how we can make this work. All right, so let's get into the meat of, meat of the partnership, which I um, want to get to, because I think that's fundamental. Thanks for sharing the perspective mm -hmm. on the community piece. We're big on it, we've been doing a lot, we're a community brand ourselves. Uh, we're not a closed garden, we're not about you know, restricting and, and, and censoring people at events. That's not what we're about. So, you know, you guys know that, so appreciate your comment on the community there. The Elastic Data Platform, you guys um, are talking about, it's a partnership deal. Yep. You provide an epic software, you guys are providing some great uh, security in there. What is it about, what's the benefit? So it's, you're leading the, the product. Take a minute to explain the product and then the roles. Yeah, so the Elastic Data Platform is, uh, a capability, set of capabilities that is meant to help our enterprise customers get to that next level of self-service. Data science uh, as a service. And do that on any cloud with any tools in a secured and controlled manner. That's what the Elastic Data Platform is. And it's meant to plug into the customer's existing investments and their existing tools and augment that. And through our services arm, we tie these technologies together using their open APIs. That's what they, why that's so critical for us. And we bring that value back to our customers. And you guys are probably in the Epic software 
Yeah. So what is Epic, epic software? software? I mean, I love yeah. Epic yeah. software. That's yeah. Epic. <laughs> I hope it's not an Epic it's fail. An epic name. So yeah, Epic it's name, but Elastic Epic. Elastic Private Instant Clusters is actually an acronym. What it stands for. Great but acronym. That is what it provides it's, for yeah. our customers. So say um, it again. Epic stands for Elastic Private Instant Clusters. <laughs> so it can run in a private cloud environment on your on-prem infrastructure, but as I said before, it can run in a hybrid architecture on the public cloud as well. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we're we're working closely with the Dell EMC team. They're you know an investor. Um, we, we work closely with their services organization, with their server organization, the storage organization, but they, they really are you know, the glue that brings it all together. Mm -hmm. um, you know, from services to software to hardware, and provides you know, the complete solution to the customers. So, you know, as I think Matt multi said- Multi-tenancy is a huge deal. Mm -hmm. Multi-tenancy oh, yes, yes. is a huge deal. Yeah, absolutely, yep. yeah. So to be ability to have you know, logical isolation between each of those different tenants for different data science teams, different analyst teams, uh, you know that's particularly you know at, at large financial services organizations like Barclays, who spoke yesterday, um, that Matt alluded to earlier. Mm -hmm. You know they talked about the need to support a variety of different business yeah. units who each have their own unique use cases. Whether it's you know batch processing with Hadoop or you know real time streaming, streaming and fast data with you know Spark, Kafka, and you know a NoSQL database, or whether it's you know deep learning and mm -hmm. machine learning. Each of those different tenants has different needs, and so you can spin up, you know, containers using our solution. Yeah, and that's for each been a big tenants. theme. It's been a big theme this week too. Just so many mm -hmm. little things, but this one relates mm -hmm. to this one: is the elastic mm -hmm. nature of how people want to manage the provisioning of more resource. So right. here's mm -hmm. what we see. They're using collective intelligence, mm -hmm. data. Hey, they're data science guys, they figured it out. Yeah. Whatever the usage is, they can do a virtual layer, if you mm -hmm. will, and then based upon the usage, they can then double down. So let the users drive, that's real mm -hmm. collaborative, yeah. that seems to be a big theme, so this helps mm -hmm. there. Right. The other th theme has been the centralized, <laughs> this is the GDPR mm -hmm. hanging over yeah. everyone's head, but exactly. the, that, even though that's more of a threat mm -hmm. and it's a gun to the head, it's the hammer or the guillotine, right. however you look at it, mm -hmm. there's more of, enablement around centralization. Mm -hmm. It's not just the threat of, of that, it's other things that Correct. are benefiting. It's, it's more than just the threat of the GDPR and being compliant from those perspectives, right? The other portion of this is, is you want to do, you do want to provide self-service. So the key to self-service is that's great, I can create an environment, but if it takes me a long time to get data to that environment, to actually be able to utilize it or protect the data that's in that environment by having to rewrite policies from a different place, then you don't get the, you don't get the, the benefit, right? The acceleration of the self-service. So having centralized policies with distributed enforcements gives you that elastic ability, right? Again, we can deploy the, the central engines, again, on-premises, but you can protect data that's in the cloud or protect data that's in a private cloud. So as companies move data for the different workloads, we can put the same protections with them and it, go, and it goes um, immediately with them. So you don't have to manage it in multiple places. It's not like, oh, did I remember to put that rule over in this system Mm -hmm. Oh, no I didn't, uh, and guess what just happened to me? Mm -hmm. You know, I did get smacked with the big fine because I didn't, well, was it compliant? So compliance. How about audit too? I mean, you tracking the audit side too? Yeah, so audit's a great portion of that, so right, and we do audit for a couple of reasons. One is to make sure that you are compliant, but two is to make sure you actually have the right policies defined. Are people accessing the data the way you expect them to access that data? So that's another big portion of us from what we do from an audit perspective is that data usage lineage, and we actually tell you what the customer, what that user was trying to do. So if a customer is trying to access data, you see a large group trying to access a certain set of data, but they're being denied access to it. Now you can look and say, dude, is that truly correct? You know, do I want them not well, to be- Well, Equifax, that thing was being fished out for months, months and months and months, not just four. Right. That thing's been fished mm -hmm. over 10 times. In fact, yes. state-sponsored actors were franchises of that organization. Yep. So if they were in the VPN, so they it's were not in. even, mm -hmm. so right. you, this is where the issues are. Okay, mm -hmm. let's just say that happened again. Yep. You would have flagged it. We flag it. You would have seen the pattern access and said, okay, a lot of people are you know, cleaning us out. Mm -hmm. Yep, you know. what's happening, right? So you get to see that usage, the lineage of the usage of the data, right? So you get to see that pattern as well not only who's trying to access it, right, because protecting the perimeter, is, as we all know, right, is no longer viable. So we actually get to watch the usage of the that usage pattern so you can detect an anomaly in that type of system, as well as, and you can quickly change policies to shut down that, that gap, and then watch to see what happens, see who's continuing to try to hit it. Well, it's been a great conversation. Love that you guys are on, and great to see the uh, Elastic Data Platform uh, come together through, through partnerships. Again, as you know, we're really passionate about highlighting and understanding more of the community dynamic as it becomes more than just socialization, it's a business model for the enterprise as it was in open source. We'll be covering that. Um, so I'd like to go around like a panel here mm -hmm. just to end this. 
uh, segment, share something that someone might not know what's going on in the industry that you want to point out that as an observation, an anecdote that hasn't been covered, hasn't been surfaced. It could be a haymaker, it could be something anecdotal, personal observation in the big data world in Big Data NYC this week or beyond, yeah. what should people know about that may or may not be covered out there that's happening that they should know about? Well, I think this one's, people pretty much should know about this one, right? It was four or five years ago, Hadoop was going to replace everything in the world. And two, three years ago, the RDBMS's groups were like, Hadoop will never make it out of the science um, fair project, right? We're in a world now where that's no longer true. It's somewhere in between, right? Hadoop is going to remain, and they're going to be continued, and the RDBMSs are also going to continue. So you need to look at ecosystems that can actually allow you to cover both sides of that coin, which we're talking about here, is those types of tools are going to continue to gather forward. And so you have to look at your entire ecosystem and move away from siloed functions to how you actually look at an entire data mm -hmm. protection and data usage um, environment. Matt? I would say that the technology adoption in the enterprise is outstripping the organization's ability to keep up with it. So as we deploy new technologies, tools, and techniques to do all sorts of really amazing things, we see the organization lagging in its ability to keep up. Mm -hmm. And so policies and procedures, operating models, whatever you want to call that, you can put it under the data governance umbrella, I suppose. If those don't keep up, mm -hmm. you're going to end up with just an organization that is mismatched with the technology that is put into place, and ultimately you could end up in a massive compliance problem. Now, th that's worst case, but even then, best mm -hmm. case, you're going to have really inefficient use of your resources. My, my favorite question to ask organizations is, let's say you could put a timer on one of these data science sandboxes. So what happens when the timer goes off and the data scientist is not done? and you've got a, a line of people waiting for resources, what do you do? What is, how does the organization respond to that? It's a really simple question, but the answer is going to be very nuanced. So it, that's the policy, that's the operating model stuff that we're talking about that we've got to think about when we enable self-service and security. Those things have to come hand in hand. That's the operational mm -hmm. thinking that needs to come yep. through. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yeah, Jason. I think for, and for us, I mean, this has been happening for some time now, but um, I think there's still, is this, this notion that the traditional way to deploy Hadoop and other big data workloads uh, on-prem is bare metal, you know, and that's the way it's, it's always been done. Or you can run it in the cloud. But I think what we're seeing now, what we've seen evolve over the, over the past you know, couple of years is you can run your on-prem workloads using Docker containers in a containerized environment. I mean, you can have this cloud-like experience on-prem, but you can also provide the ability to, to you know, be able to move those workloads, whether they're on-prem or in the cloud. So you can have this hybrid approach and multi-cloud approach. Uh -huh. um, so I think that's that's fundamentally changing. It's it's a it's a new dynamic, a new paradigm mm -hmm. for big data, um, either on-prem or in the cloud. That it doesn't have to be you know on bare metal anymore. And and we get the same. We we've been able yeah, to it's prove the on-prem. On people want on-prem. That's where the action is. <coughs> and cloud, no doubt, but right now it's mm -hmm. a transition. Right. Hybrid cloud's mm -hmm. definitely going to be there. Yeah. I guess my observation is um, the tool shed problem. Mm -hmm. You know, I said it earlier, all day, it's like, you don't want to have a tool shed mm -hmm. full of tools you don't use anymore, mm -hmm. or buy a hammer that you yeah. wants to turn into a lawnmower because the vendor changed, pivoted. Mm -hmm. You got to be careful what you buy, the mm -hmm. tools. So don't, you know, don't think like a tool, think like a platform. Mm -hmm. And I think right. having a platform mentality, understanding the system, or operating environment as you were getting to, I think really is a fundamental exercise that most decision makers think about. Because again, your relationship with Elastic Data Platform proves that this operating environment's evolving. It's not about the tool. Right. The tool has to be enabled, and if the tool is enabled into the platform, it should have a data model that falls into mm -hmm. place. No one should have to think about it. Yep. You have the compliance, you got the mm -hmm. Docker containers, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. don't buy too many tools. Mm -hmm. If you do, make sure they're clean and it's right. in a clean tool shed. Yep. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> you got a lawnmower, I guess that's a platform, bad analogy. But you know, I think tools has been the rage in this market, um, and now I think platforming it is something that we're seeing more of. So guys, thanks so much, mm -hmm. appreciate it. Uh, Elastic Data Platform by Dell EMC with the Epic platform from uh, Blue Data and Blue Talent providing the, the data governance and compliance, great stuff on certainly GDPR. Blue Talent, you guys got a bright future, congratulations. Yes, thank you. All right, more CUBE coverage after this short break, live from New York, it's the CUBE.